The actresses nominated for a performance in a supporting role are Jane Alexander and All the President's Men, <laughs> Jody Foster and Taxi Driver, <laughs> Lee Grant and Voyage of the Damned, <laughs> Piper Laurie and Carrie, <laughs> and Beatrice Straight in Network. And the winner is. Beatrice Strait and Network. heavy and I'm the dark horse and thank you so much all of you it's a great great thrill for me and very unexpected though I should have known that when I had someone like Paddy Chayefsky writing and saying things that we all feel but can't express and when we have someone like Sidney Lumet who makes one want to act forever and a producer like Howard Gottfried then how can I miss? But I know that my mother would be delighted. She had great potential for an actress, but didn't think she should do it. So she pushed me and was delighted. And Michael Chekhov, the great actor and teacher who I studied with, who gave me a love and respect for the theater, which is the whole point of why we're all here. It's a great profession, and we have to keep thinking it all the time and we all do, and we all love it. And I'm so grateful for that. And for a wonderful lady, age 93, who lives here in Los Angeles, who's watching tonight, one of our first women directors who directed Paul Robeson in Othello in London, Ellen Van Valkenburg Brown, bright as ever, thank you. And last but not least, my husband, who's put up with me for 28 years. Thank you so, so much. How long has it been going on? A month. I thought it was a transient thing, blow over in a week. I still pray to God it's just a menopausal infatuation. But it is an infatuation, Louise. There's no sense in my saying I won't see her again, because I will. You want me to leave? Check into a hotel? Do you love her? I don't know how I feel. I'm grateful I can feel anything. I know I'm obsessed with her. Then say it. Don't keep telling me that you're obsessed, that you're infatuated. Say that you're in love with her. of building a home and raising a family and all the senseless pain that we have inflicted on each other. I'm damned if I'm going to stand here and have you tell me you're in love with somebody else. Because this isn't a convention weekend with your secretary, is it? Or, or some board that you picked up after three belts of booze. This is your great winter romance, isn't it? Your last roar of passion before you settle into your emeritus years. Is that what's left for me? Is that my share? She gives someone a passion and 
I got the dotage? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to sit home knitting and purling while you slink back like some penitent drunk? I'm your wife, damn it! And if you can't work up a winter passion for me, the least I require is respect and allegiance. Say something for God's sake. I've got nothing to say. I won't give you up easily, Max. Perhaps it is better if you move out. Does she love you, Max? I'm not sure she's capable of any real feelings. She's television generation. She learned life from Bugs Bunny. The only reality she knows comes to her from over the TV set. She's very carefully devised a number of scenarios for all of us to play, like uh, movie of the week. Oh, my God, look at us, Louise. Here we are going through the obligatory middle of act two, scorned wife throws peccant husband out scene. But don't worry, I'll come back to you in the end. All of her plot outlines have me leaving her and coming back to you because the audience won't buy a rejection of the Happy American family. She does have one script in which I kill myself. An adapted for television version of Anna Karenina. Where she's Count Vronsky and I'm Anna. <laughs> You're in for some dreadful grief, Max. <laughs> <laughs> 